What's going on today, Internet? Selfish here with Retrospect. Today, by request, I'm going to go through some upgrades to the Ambernic RG355XP. That's the last time you're going to hear me say the whole name. We're going to do some basic button upgrades, add some stickers to the inside of the case, like Ambernic does on their cool video, as well as a little bit of custom firmware. We're going to put refried beans on here and hope it doesn't smell too bad. Let's take a look. <laughs> Not a whole lot you're going to need for this project, but we'll talk about it as we go along. I do have some custom buttons here from my friends over there at Cloud Life over on Etsy. I will throw a link down on my Thingamabob for them. You're going to want to start off by taking out your memory cards. I suppose you also want to make sure you have your screwdrivers and things, but make sure you get memory cards out of there before we start taking this thing apart. It's not like a Steam Deck. You're not going to break it, but you still don't want them in there. You got one single screw here on the back. You're just going to take that right off. That's going to give you access to your battery compartment. Ooh, isn't that a fancy little battery? All right, and I like to use a tweezers in order to get, I almost said players, tweezers to get the battery out. All you do is grab it by the sides there, There's uh, and then just kind of give her a little nudge. Mine didn't want to come out so much, so I had to kind of pry it a little bit, but either way, as long as you're not actually grabbing the wires themselves, you should be fine. And even if you do, they'll probably stay in there. You do have four screws here on the back to get the back casing off. If I haven't mentioned this already, I put this at 800 speed for a lot of this stuff because that's about how fast I normally talk. So I figured maybe the video could keep up with me. Once you get the back off there, uh, you didn't need a smudging tool like I thought you did. I was, a little <laughs> I was just kind of uh, whatever. Uh, but the uh, you have full access to all the other buttons. Just pull those right off there. Those are going to be your shoulder buttons, which is what you saw me throw up on top. And then you do have your screws here. Now be careful when you are opening up this little sandwich. There is a little bit of jelly surprise in there. You got to undo this little clip here, which is going to be for your screen. Just pop that thing right off. If you can't tell there on the left, the rubber membrane stayed on there for the buttons. So you just got to go back and uh, pull them off that bottom of that PCB. I'm not sure why they always stick to it, but they do. Throw all your buttons in here. Just make sure they're lined up correctly. If you go with the buttons that I have, there is no A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, Z. It's just going to be blank face buttons that feel really nice and what have not. Now, then you do put in your start select and your menu button. And then we're going to have to put this bad boy back in here. So, as you can tell, it's a pretty easy project. But uh, this is a, the most difficult part of the project is going to be getting that lined back up. Now, just a little trick. There is a line on the white cable there. It's going to be pretty hard to break that cable, but just be careful. But if you can get pushed in to the receptacle to the white line, you will be just fine. It will uh, it'll click right down. Just put the thing over it and click it in, and it'll stay there. Put your last couple of screws back in here. Now we're going to hold that PCB back down, and then we do have to put our shoulder buttons back in. They're pretty easy. There's just one post on each side that holds on your L1 and R1, and then there is... Uh, your L2 and R2 just kind of balance there in front of in front of the micro switch, which is why they rattle. So I'm going to probably go and do some kind of mod video on this again to try to fix the rattle, uh, but that'll be at a later date. Do put those last four screws in there. And then test out all your buttons to make sure everything's working right. It's all to fanciness. If something is too tight, uh, take the buttons back out and just lightly sand the back of them, and it will loosen them up a little bit. Just an old trick that we have. Back in the day when you got these buttons, none of them ever fit. You always had to sand them, so every once in a while you'll still get one that you have to sand, but not very often. Get that battery back in there. Just make sure that you get those plugs in there and go from there. If you don't usually use an electric screwdriver for things, don't use it for a project like this. You have to remember you're screwing plastic on plastic. And I just happen to use one every day doing this stuff. And mine actually has a torque setting, so it stops screwing when it hits a certain point. Or at least I tell myself that. I'm not actually sure if it does or not, but I tend to, once I start to get tight, I pull it. So it's not going to continue to screw in there. But if you're not used to it, don't do it. We're just powering on real quick just to make sure that everything works on the handheld. That way it has power. We're going to shut her back down, take out the original cards that I had just put in there to make sure that it powered on. And we're going to take a new SD card and throw it into the computer. And we are going to start the right process. There's a link down on my thingamabob if you need it. That's going to go to the refried beans GitHub page. And you're going to go on there. And I'm actually, my recorder 
quit working while I was making this video. So I'm walking through this with this uh, as I'm recording here the audio. But you just have to click on the link that I sent you. Click on the download from release build. And then click on the 35XX splash. And that will give you refried beans. You'll see that on there. It'll be M-U-O-S RG35XX. And it'll say refried beans. It's version 2405.1. 2405.1. Refried zip download that you're gonna need some kind of zip extractor if you don't have a 7-zip or anything like that you're definitely gonna want to download it I would recommend using 7-zip it pretty much extracts everything and it's free on the interwebs the other thing that you are gonna need is a program like Rufus I could throw links to both of these down on my thing Bob that way with Rufus you can write it to the desk once it's done downloading I just right click on it go to more and have it unzip to or extract to my desktop while that is unzipping would be a good time to format your new micro SD card and you are just going to want to go and format it straight up to fat 32 just seems to be what works the best in all these Linux devices and if it's not in that it gets all angry at you anyways if it's under 128 gigs probably already formatted fat 32 I would format it anyways just going to help in the process going forward it might be an XFAT, and sometimes they get mad about XFAT too. They should both finish extracting about the same time. It should be about done unzipping and reformatting. Once both are complete, jump into Rufus, and you are gonna want to click on the SD card that you just formatted, and then click on that little icon on the right to go to your desktop and pick that file we just extracted, and go back over, and we are going to run the process, and this is going to create the disk that is going to run refried beans pretty simple easy peasy lemon squeezy once it's completed safely eject that new disk from your computer and then we are going to put just that one not the games disk just the operating system disk into tf slot one which is your internal and letter buck now this install is going to take a little while. I think it took me just under seven minutes to do the install. I'll put it on 800 times here for you so you don't have to watch the whole process go down. But what this is going to be doing is getting your device ready for some new operating system stuff, which is pretty awesome. Now the other thing you wanna do is have a new secondary card for your games. If you don't already have your ROMs all set up, you'll be able to do that here in just a second. Once this is all done installing, we'll put the ROMs card in, turn it on, turn it off, take it back out, put it in your computer, drag and drop your ROMs over. I'm just going to sit over here and apparently put my desk back together to make it look all pretty for the end of the video while I am waiting for this to install. Once again, shout out to my boys over at Cloud Life. They don't pay me. They don't sponsor me. I just love the work that they do. And they're very nice to me. So I'm sure they'll be very nice to you. Even before I got a bunch of stuff from them, they were always very nice to me. So Julian over at Cloud Life, thank you. Hello if you're watching this. If you want to support an awesome small business Etsy shop, link is down in my thing about for Cloud Life. That is only if you enjoy high quality buttons. And here I'm just getting things like Wi-Fi set up, you know, the basic stuff. I don't want to show you my password, so we're not going to show you that. But just some basic uh, kind of creature comfort things when you first go in. Now you're not going to see your games and things in there until you create that ROMs library. But I started going through some themes, trying to figure out what theme I wanted. Ultimately, I just stuck with this basic theme. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to go through it when I have more time. And oddly, when I made this video, I had already put this OS on my device, if you saw at the beginning. And I reflashed my card just so I could go through and show you how to do it. And then my screen recorder stopped working. So I didn't even get the video. So it was just a complete waste of time. But that's okay. If any screen recorder companies are out there watching, let's holler at your boy. Because I've gone through three of them this year. So let's see if we can put yours up to the test. All right, now we're going to throw in the games card. That looks have our ROM files and things like that on it. We're going to reboot it yet again. But now we should be pretty much ready to go, which is kind of cool. This does give the option also to check and, to, and select your own emulators. So you can choose if you want to run it off RetroArch or if you want to run it off at standalone. There is plenty of options included in this OS or this firmware build. And all you have to do is go into the settings for that game and you will be able to make those kinds of adjustments. Now, you do have to do a lot of scrolling. I believe there's over 60 systems in here now with refried beans. So you are going to have to alphabetically find what you're looking for. So unless you're playing Amigo a lot, you're going to be kind of at the back of the list probably. Or somewhere in the middle, but you still got to find it.
Then we're just gonna test out here real quick. PPSS, PP, and make sure that it works really well. I have said the name of this emulator wrong so many times. There's so many P's and only a couple of S's. And I screw it up all the time, but I think I nailed it today. PPSSPP. Yeah. I think I figured it out now with PP because it ends with PP. And you're just going to trickle your way through that one. And then I just went through and just checked a couple other ones. And then we are going to get to the last part of this, which is going to be putting the awesome, cool little sticker thing on the outside of the device. So I am going to skip the rest of Bean's setup right now. If you want to see a full Bean setup video, I could probably do that. Just leave me a comment down below. We're getting better at the schedule, but I've been a little under the weather, so I haven't been able to keep up. So I am trying to record ahead again. But leave it down there, and I will get to it as soon as I can, or I will do a write-up on the website, which I actually am already starting a write-up for it, so maybe it'll just end up being there. We'll see what happens. And now I'm rambling. If there's any question, Super Mario World Yoshi's Island runs at 60 FPS without a hiccup. I know everybody wants to know that these days. Nobody cares about God of War anymore. Now it's time for a little sticker drawing, whatever you want to do, personalized fun. We're going to put something on the outside. You do have five little rubber dobbies on here that are covering up five little screws. So you got to go through and take those off. Easiest way to do it is with an X-Acto knife. Try to hit it off the side, though, not off the top. You won't notice if there's a hole in there from an X-Acto knife, but still... It's just nice to know that you're not going to have to worry about knowing if there's a hole in there if you just pull it off the side. And they do stick up far enough in order to be able to do that. Once you get those five little knobbers off of there, you are going to want to turn around and you're going to want to take out those five little screws. Again, I wouldn't use an electric screwdriver unless you are a professional. I also wouldn't recommend putting any pressure on while you're unscrewing. It's not going to be necessary. Again, these are in plastic. They're not going to be in there super tight but you do risk the screwdriver coming out and gouging your screen. Hopefully you already have a screen cover on there in case that were to happen, so it's just wrecking your screen cover, but if you don't, you could leave a pretty good big accident right across your screen. I know somebody's gonna reach out to me in the comments or via message and they're going to have scratched their screen and they're gonna think that I actually am in charge of and or know the process for replacing it. I don't, and I'm not. You're going to have to go through Ambernick. I don't work for Ambernick. This video is not sponsored by Ambernick. I'm just making a video. And unfortunately, as much as I'd love to help you, I don't have any way to help you. All I'm going to do is tell you to email them. And nine times out of ten, when I tell people that, they write me back and say, wow, that worked. So that's what I'm going to tell you to do right now. Email them. Back to the task at hand. Use some sort of smudging tool. Go around the outside. Be careful. Again, you're working around the screen. There's also very, very delicate, very delicate little cable right here that I pointed out. That is what makes your screen work from, uh, well, it, it bends and things and it's flexible. Now you just want to pick your poison of what you want on the inside of there. You can print out pictures, cut them out, do whatever you want to do. I was going to put my Retrospect logo on there, but I have all these Mario stickers and I figured, what the hell. I also ended up taking off my battery cover and putting one behind on the battery. I put a little Luigi back there, so I don't know, you have that option as well. I would recommend making it so that it's facing the direction that I just made it, so that when other people see it, it looks right. Otherwise, Mario would be standing on his head when it was open to anybody that was a passerby. But hey, that's up to you. I've just seen a couple of videos of people doing this on their SPs already, and their people are upside down when they're open. Food for thought. Now you got left to do is just carefully line those little clippers back up that you had to pry apart before, those little clippy plastic pin thingies that are in there, and kind of lightly push it together. If there's too much resistance, you're not doing it right. And once those pop into place, you pretty much don't need the screws, but it will fall apart eventually from opening and closing. So we're going to want to go back and put all five of those screws back in, as well as the little rubber daubers. This is sped up. Please, please don't try to race me. You'll scratch your screen. And the dabbers go in pretty easily. Uh, some are a little bit longer than others, and there's no real reason for it. So I can't find a real reason. But those also help with closing the screen so that, that everything's not rubbing. So make sure you do actually get those back in. That'll help prevent some scratching from like around your buttons and stuff. Once that's all done, power it up. Make sure it works. And we are done. We got a sweet little SP we got here. Not like it wasn't really sweet before, but it always feels better when it's personalized. But anyways, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share this video with your friends, especially those friends of yours that are struggling to put buttons in this. This was my first attempt at doing it. It's not too bad. I think they'll be able to figure it out. 
And because I know you're itching to watch some more videos of mine, I threw a video down, link in my thing with Bob from the review of the RG35X XSP. Yes, I know I said I wasn't going to say it again. And there should be a couple of videos up here on the screen for you. You know, that Google says you're going to like. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. I'm out. Bye-bye.